Thank you. Well, yes, um, it can be dangerous, or it can be actually uh, a really time-saving as well. So you kind of, uh, and that brings us exactly to the next slide, which is, uh, of course, you probably, most of you have probably have seen that thing before. Uh, this is the vision. This is what, uh, this is where we want to get at the end of this presentation. And also, this is where most of us kind of believe we already are. But, you know, saving the world, typing uh, some Perl with regex and stuff, and, you know, saving the world and making it a safe place and everything. It's kind of cool, cool uh, idea. But the thing I usually tend to ask people when I when I speak about regular expressions is that how many of you can actually pass the well something I call a napkin test? I mean, like, can you write down on the napkin a fully working kind of advanced regex that would actually do what you what you wanted to do? And then most of the people would be like, no, nah, well, no, well, maybe, yes, I guess, and so on. And uh, so also, but bringing back to, going back to the dangerous part is that, that it kind of makes, can make things a little bit more complicated as well sometimes. So, um, let me talk about a little bit more about the reality. I mean, this is where we want to go, and this is kind of the, the uh, things that can 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 be a little bit problematic, but how it is actually in the real world? What I did was uh, I got a, a piece of code from a colleague of mine um, that I copied here. Uh, well, I mean, all I did for presentation purposes today, I just uh, I'm going to show you one in one line instead of just showing the whole thing. And uh, this is how it all started. I mean, this is the method that is supposed to validate email. And it all started with a really nice and cute kind of regex, which is not that long and kind of readable. And you say that, well, there will be uh, some, well, I mean, you can just ignore that. But I mean, just saying like, there will be some letters, there will be some numbers, there will be some at sign, there will be some more and stuff like that. And then you realize a little at some point that, well, that doesn't really work. I mean, that doesn't exactly match everything what I really want to. So uh, what happens is that, I mean, that's what happened in the code. That line got commented out. Okay, fine. And that was replaced by this guy, right? <clears throat> uh, there, were, there were three lines in that method. As you can understand, or probably you probably already guessed, that thing got commented out as well. Could you actually guess what was the last line? Well, you know, you kind of come to, to like, okay, well, screw it. I'm not, that doesn't work. Return true anyway. And that's, that's, that's where I don't want any of you or me, myself uh, be uh, that kind of situation in. So we're going to look at, 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 go through basics, go through a bit more advanced topics uh, of the regular expressions, see if we can refresh all that kind of uh, hopefully good memories of uh, regular expressions and um, you know be be a bit more uh, be a bit bit more uh, uh, relaxed with using them. Before I go on to the like theory part, I would like to just say that I've been using a lot and in, th in this presentation I'm using a lot two basically two web pages that are screenshots of uh, here and there. It's uh, regexpal.com and regexper.com. Uh, la I mean, the last one is the one that generates all those kind of diagrams like this, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's really easy to analyze. The other one is just to show where I get the matches and everything. It's the regexper uses some kind of train diagrams to show how regexes are actually built, and that kind of helps to visualize. So thanks to those guys who created those. It's uh, it helped quite a bit to 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 just it helps a lot to work with the regular expressions. So, typical regular expression, I mean simple regular expression, is like this, and this is just example only, just for just to show something, uh, some kind of regular expression. So you don't really have to think what it does. I mean, ignore the syntax for now, and uh, we'll go get back to that in a second. So. Um, <coughs> Um, I just wanted to 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 introduce that, and I just 
to show that it's it's a really powerful tool. I mean, it can do a lot of things, and it can save you a lot of time, and it can. Um, uh, it's implemented in lots of tools, and it's the main, most of the languages. I mean, almost I don't know. I, I don't really know any other any language like well spread used language that doesn't have support for regex in a way, and uh, also editors, tools, everybody implements them. They're a little bit different. They have different flavors. They have different things, but still, um, they are there. Um, and the other thing is that no matter how many flavors there is, uh, it's uh, it, as long as you master one, you will be able to master the other ones. I mean, th th there's not that much difference in between them. Uh, usually, what you would want to use a regular expression is replacing something, or replacing one thing with another, or trying to match something in the, your text. So you have like lots of text, and you want to match for some kind of pattern. You just describe that thing with the regular expression, see it ma match that, and that will that will that will happen. That will happen, right? Uh, and it's mu much easier to use than like search and replace. Sometimes just plain search and replace with text. Um, this is a uh, log file. I just uh, needed something to use for the examples. Uh, so I picked a uh, log file from an application that we're uh, running. I random, uh, not randomized, but I anonymized the class names and uh, different IDs and stuff, so and IPs and all that kind of things just to, just to make it uh, not that obvious where that thing comes from. But otherwise, it's just real, uh, real-time uh, log from a JBoss application, spinning and working and uh, doing stuff. Uh, I'm, I thought that maybe we should use this one for just um, uh, when, when I show when when, I, when 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 we talk about the regular expressions. So let's start with a simple one. This guy. Um, what you say here is that uh, what which we have here is. Uh, two different things. We have one of them, or actually three. Uh, there is a, one of them is the star, which is saying that, um, point star, saying that there will be any character zero or more times. So dot is anything. Could be anything. Could be a number. Could be a letter. Could be anything. Uh, and then the star saying that it could be zero or many times, right? Uh, then the, we have a, some kind of group saying that there will be either info, also uh, text, I N F O or warn uh, W A R N just those letters following each other, and then there will be anything else again. In this is how it's represented, right? Any characters, either info or warn, and then any character again. This is really simple uh, regular expression, and if we look at that log file, it's gonna show it like this. So you're gonna have match for four uh, first four lines because they have info and warn in it. And the different colors is just to show the, uh, it kind of uses uh, yellow and blue, just to show that there are two different matches. Because, uh, so those colors doesn't say, don't, don't just ignore them. So, okay, let's make it a little bit more advanced. What do we have here? Uh, we have here, uh, character classes, which are kind of useful to say, I mean, we're gonna, uh, we're, we're going to try to match the whole thing. I mean, the same line we matched here, but then now we're going to have actually to extract the date. We're going to have say, say that there is a date there, there is a time there. Um, and to do that, we're going to say that, okay, we're going to have um, a group. Those uh, normal parentheses, they specify groups. And then there will be a um, character class which is numbers, 0 to 9, anything between 0 and 9. And then uh, there are these curly braces that are um, showing the uh, range, saying that there will be four of them first, because it's a year, right? It will be four numbers, then there will be a dash, then there will be two more numbers, because it's also, they have a character class of 0 to 9, and there will be two of them. Um, then there will be another dash, there will be two more, and then there will be anything, uh, because we have, we, we know that our log file has a uh, uh, timestamp in it as well, right? And then there will be error, and then there will be anything else again, looking like this. And um, 
So if you make it a little bit more, we'll see that uh, uh, if we apply it to our the same same log file, we'll see that okay now we can actually uh, get um, get a match on error instead of uh, the other lines. And also we the cool thing is that we have all those parentheses. Uh, the outer parentheses, the making that a group, so we can actually extract the date and use it for something else um, later. Okay, uh, let's make it a little bit more advanced. Let's say we want to um, match an IP address, uh, and um, here we're going to say we're going to do it really simple. We have to going to say that there will be start of the line that little. Um, uh, sign, little, little character in front says that this is supposed to be a start of a line, then there will be anything, then there should be a, like 192 uh, a dot, we have to backslash the dot because otherwise it, the regular expression would think that it's uh, any character, right? So we backslash that, we escape it, and then it will be 168 escape 0. Uh, everything we have seen before, right? Except the um, that thing that we can use, I, I deliberately use this kind of the hat sign twice they have different uh, they have different usages and that's uh, really important to 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 be aware of because this is the start of the line and that's by the way end of the line but this guy it's uh, it's the negation with if you use it inside a character class you actually say that there should be anything 192.168.06 not 9 anything else but 9 and then anything. Then you can actually add more things. You can say nine, eight, seven, and it will be none of all of them. This is a kind of different. Uh, this is kind of thing that you sh should be aware of because th this is actually the same character doing two different things. So, what if we? Um, Remove the uh, the dollar sign at the end, the dollar sign at the end, um, and the dots are not escaped, and uh, that will actually that's that's kind of thing that's also a common problem that you can m might be able to write because if you 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 just use that as a string, that's gonna uh, that's gonna work, but that's gonna match really way, way, way more than what it's supposed to match because it will match anything saying like 192A, 168B, 0C6 or something like that. It will actually match that as well because now you're actually saying any character. This is another thing that you should be aware of, right? So, um, What if we have a look at this thing? Uh, there is uh, this this regular expression also is uh, looks kind of legit and it actually gets us uh, a match, but there is a slight tiny little problem with that thing. Um, the last digit uh, will be that is um, the last digit here will not be a part of any group. So if you're going to try to uh, get that to, to extract that thing, you won't put that in a group. That's also another thing that you ha should be aware of. And what if we add some more? Um, this, this is going to work for uh, two digits, by the way, um, numbers. But it's not going to match anything that has three digits. That's another thing, because like uh, matching IP addresses, we're going to have an example at the end uh, to show that, but matching IP addresses is how simple, even though it sounds really simple, there are quite a few rules that uh, have to be applied to IP numbers because they can't be more than 255, for example, or they could be two or three or one uh, digit and so on, so on. So it's actually not that trivial that it actually sounds like. It's uh, First you just write that down and it's like, ooh, that works. and then you get lots of matches to some things that are not supposed to be matching. Okay, let's see what we can do that uh, here. Um, if we want to match a um, an IP address and um, 
we can say that, uh, okay, uh, we're going to have 192.168.0.6. And then there will be class, um, character class, uh, anything between 0 and 9. Uh, but uh, also, we would have, um, we're going to have uh, uh, at least one of them least one character and then but that character should not be nine and uh, then anything else so one hundred eight zero six none of one of zero to nine but not nine afterwards and then any kind of character end of the line this this is uh, making it a little bit more robust but actually it's not we'll see we'll see why in a little bit um, Another thing I want to introduce, or well, just remind you, I mean, most of you guys probably have seen that thing before, and but just remind you is that this, this optional kind of um, uh, uh, character saying that something is optional, that's, uh, that's the question mark over there. So it says basically it should be a flavor, and then maybe there will be you there, maybe it will be not, and then they are. Uh, so really quick recap um, on quantifiers. We can have zero, uh, zero or more for a star, plus, which is one and more of the characters. Uh, there is a uh, zero or none question mark, which is like optional thing, right? We can have a number, one, one, uh, one number, or we can have two numbers, which is like minimum and maximum values. So if you have uh, like curly braces with one, this is pretty much the same as the plus. So you can actually use them uh, interchangeably. Then grouping. Um, you can use grouping for diff uh, different things. You can, say gr you can use grouping to say that there will be a group of different things. It's either one or the other. Or you can use grouping to uh, logically separate things and extract things later on. Another thing is that um, the, uh, we can use also um, the question mark to use for, uh, to, to, to say that you should, you, you're, uh, this is a group, but you don't really need to save that because that's this optimization thing. There are also things that have to be considered with the regular expressions that kind of some kind of uh, uh, optimization there uh, this is one of them this is a way of saying to a uh, engine saying that hey this is a group I'm going to use it right now but I'm not have it, I'm not going to use it for anything else so don't really save it don't use memory for that because you're if you're going through lots and lots of te text it will use actually quite a bit of memory to s storing all these groups in case you want to refer to them later uh, this is a way of telling you that you shouldn't <coughs> Okay, let's look at um, something else. Let's look at uh, just a normal, let's start with just normal uh, way of uh, matching things, uh, saying like, okay, I want to match anything that has WA in it. Okay, fine, this is, this is normal matching, right? But then we can have uh, something called uh, positive look ahead, which is really, sometimes really neat thing to do. Sometimes it could be a really performance killer. But uh, this is uh, th th this is kind of thing that you uh, might want to use sometimes because you, you can have uh, you can have you can match like here. Uh, there are different uh, words like they, they, some of them have like for example war file, warn blah blah. So if you if you if you wouldn't have used the positive look ahead, it would actually have matched all of those. It would match this guy and it would match that and this and uh, everything. Sometimes you don't want to do that. Sometimes you want to match, match just a little part of the word, but uh, which is a part of the bigger, bigger picture. So, look around. Uh, there is look ahead. There is look behind. So you can actually say the same thing, that I want to match something, but behind it, it should be something, uh, something else. Uh, there is a negative look ahead. Uh, saying that there will be something, that there won't be something. And there is also negative look behind. And what we can use it for, I mean, this is the kind of really simple kind of 
easy example of uh, what it could be used for. And this is, uh, you just have like lists of things and you want to match uh, email addresses and you want, for example, remove them. You just want to have names and that's what you, you do in your, uh, you write a simple regular expression saying that there should be a string and there will be like, uh, uh, you have a positive look ahead of, uh, saying that there should be like those uh, square brackets kind of things and then there should be anything there and uh, containing in, uh, cont contained in those brackets. And then you can replace it with nothing and then we'll give you a list like this, right? But what if you want to build it with that back again, then you will see that, um, okay, then I can use, uh, then, then I can write a regular expression the saying that there should be anything, there will be space, there will be anything else. And then I can build up an email address out of that. And that will probably work, right? But then you run that and then you realize that it, well, it works most of the cases, but then you have to actually know your data. I mean, when, when you use regular expressions, you really, really, really have to know your data because uh, you'll get things like that because that guy has doesn't have like last name and, uh, and, and, and first name, just, just one name, and that wouldn't match the regular expression, so you won't be able to do uh, stuff. So you want, you might want to actually uh, add, expand your regular expressions uh, somehow. Another thing is the greed. Another thing that I want to remind you of is the, is the greed. Because regular expressions normally are greedy. I mean, if you don't say anything to your expression or to your regex, it's gonna be, it's gonna try to match as much as possible. And it, this is an example, kind of trying to match an uh, XML uh, tags. Uh, so if you say like, OSTC is awesome, and awesome is uh, emphasized, and you want to try to match uh, the tags, your first thing you would do is like, okay, there will be a tag, there will be at least one character in it, and then there will be end of the tag, and you kind of expect it to match the first tag and the second one. It won't, because it's greedy. So, a uh, way of uh, doing that is to uh, add the question mark, and now the question mark has another role again. It so has something, it's not the optional part, it's, uh, it's used actually uh, to say that something is not supposed to be greedy, so you should actually s stop first time you see it. You shouldn't go all the way to the end of the text and see if you can match the, uh, the closing parenthesis there, but you should actually stop first time you actually see that. And that would give you a much better uh, match. When that being said, uh, I should warn you that you shouldn't really use um, regular expressions for uh, parsing XML or HTML or any kind of other thing. This is, um, this is a screenshot from a guy from, from, from Stack Overflow that actually asked that. I was like, hey, can I, can I use that? Can I use the, that real cool uh, uh, regex thing I just learned to, to, to match, to parse XML and stuff? Have you, any of you seen that? That's one of the most voted, uh, yes, yes, there are a couple of uh, heads nodding. It's one of the most voted uh, questions or answers on, 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 uh, on, the, on Stack Overflow. This is the answer he got. Um, and well, there is nothing wrong with encoding or anything. So this is actually the, the disclaimer from, this is written on the page saying that this is a moderated note and uh, well, there is nothing wrong with encoding or anything, this ju guy just goes really crazy. And uh, well, that's the, you don't want that thing happen to you, so uh, don't do that kind of thing. So just, 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 uh, just saying that. This is a URL uh, to that question in case you want to, uh, to have a look at it, but don't, you don't really need to remember that URL. Just Google for regex parsing regex with HTML, and that will it will be quite quite high up on the in your search engine. Well, anyway, quantifiers. Uh, all those quantifiers that uh, the star, the qu uh, the plus, and the question mark, and also this minimum and maximum quantifiers. Th th those are greedy. Uh, the, if you want to make them non-greedy, you just have to add a question mark. 
And that also kind of makes it a little bit more uh, confusing in a way, you know, because like you, like here, you have two question marks and those are actually doing two different things. One of them is actually saying that you're not supposed to be greedy and the other one is an optional character. Uh, the greedy is the this thing that it actually tries to match as much as possible because if I say um, here, uh, if I say like there should be a uh, parenthesis, there will be any th uh, at least one character and the ending ending parenthesis. The regex would actually go all the way till the end of the string and see if it, it can actually match as much as possible. So it would actually match the whole thing. But non-greedy, when, when you add the question mark, it would do the opposite. It would actually go and try to match as little as possible. So it will actually match this one, and then add this one as a match, and then we'll go further and look for another opening parenthesis and find another one closing and match that one. And if you had, if you would have more, it would have you. It would give you more matches, right? Because that one gives you just one, and this one gives you two. So this is the difference between greedy and non-greedy. So it will just eat as much as possible. So, yeah. So the final kind of recap on things that you have to remember when you work. I mean, I'm, I don't want to teach you work, working with regular expression because you probably know that already. I just want you to show the different pitfalls and different things that you really have to think about what to uh, what to do and what to what to to be able to be aware of when you're working with that. So first of them is know your data. You should know how your th uh, things look like. I mean, like that e e simple, really easy example with emails. Like you would expect everybody to have first name and last name and doesn't, and then your kind of your regex doesn't work properly in some cases, right? Uh, you should know what you should match, but the at least least important thing is actually know what you should not match. You, c you should actually be aware of that as well. I mean, this is actually even probably more important than the first one. You should actually know what it should not match. Know your flavor. So you should know what you actually are, um, uh, what kind of language you're using and what kind of uh, your engine a uh, regex engine that language is using and what kind of flavor and so on so on because though there, there there are differences there are differences for example in uh, um, things like uh, back backtracking and so on because some of the there, there is a simple test there is like a really small tiny little regex and that you can apply to a special text and if you have one engine that will kill your computer and it will just never be finished and it's going to backtrack back and forth and go crazy and go nuts and then you use another engine and it just uh, completes in less than a second. Um, <coughs> and th those engines there are like uh, NFA, DFA, those kind of engines. So have a look at those. Check what, what your favorite language is using and, uh, and ha have a look at that. Um, you should also um, yeah, th this is the, this is that part. The, the know your engine and uh, greediness again. You should be aware of that. You should be aware of that. If you have a pattern, it will try. I mean, by default, it will try to eat as much uh, possible uh, of text as possible. Um, also, that you should probably consider using if you have like lots of text and lots of uh, parentheses that you use for different things maybe just for your logical grouping or anything like that you should try to use non-capturing parentheses the ones I showed you earlier this with the question mark in front saying that hey this is I'm using for just this reason only but I don't really need to refer to that later so don't save it for me please that will save a lot of m memory and uh, uh, anchors is important thing. Those anchors are the start of the line, the end of the line, you know, those kind of things. Those are also uh, really, it helps you quite a bit. I mean, you don't think about it, but sometimes it will actually help you a, li a, a, bit, a lot, especially when you, for example, your uh, engine would go over lines and ignore the line shifts and would just go all over, but you just want to match a line, you have to be aware of that as well. So, more 
uh, examples. This is the, the last example that I kind of tried to build a little bit. I mean, well, uh, I tried to build it like uh, step by step and trying to make a, a simple regex that actually just matches uh, uh, IPs. But also I wanted to show you how to uh, be able to add actually some logic into that thing. Instead of saying like, uh, so typical thing would be like, saying something like that, right? That's that's where you would normally start. You're like, oh, well, cool. I'm going to have uh, some numbers, and there will be at least one of them. Uh, there will be start of the line. There will be some numbers, uh, at least one of them, that plus thing. And then there will be a dot, and then there will be some more numbers, at least one of them, and then there will be a dot, and then, you know, blah, blah, and then there will be end of the line, which is cool, right? It will actually match a uh, IP address, but it will also match lots of things that has nothing to do with IPs, right? This is not legal IP. This is not legal IP. This is definitely not legal IP. And, well, the good thing that it doesn't match the text string. Okay. The next iteration, you're like, okay, okay, what, what, we, can, what we can do with that? Uh, the next one would be like to say, okay, well then we can add things like saying like, okay, we're going to be started in line, will be digit, 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 dot, digit, 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 dot, and so on, right? Okay, fine. That would match actually this one. That's the only thing that would actually match, and that's also not a real IP. The real IP is down there, and that one still they won't match, right? Okay, so next step. Next kind of... Uh, uh, way of making it more uh, <coughs> advanced is to say like there will be okay there will be a digit but there will be maybe one maybe two maybe three between one and three and there will be dot and there will be the same thing over again or you could have actually used I mean I just wrote it like that but you could have used this thing and then said that four times right you could have said you could have used like curly uh, braces around the whole thing and say that there will be four of that as well there is a way of doing that um, okay, fine. How that does that look on, on our simple little simple test thing? Well, the good thing it doesn't match is that bad, bad horrible thing on top and the, the one on the bottom, but it still matches the illegal IP addresses because I don't have any logic in my uh, regex saying that um, 550 is not a legal IP because it's more than 255 and everything, right? So, um, the, the, the kind of uh, next idea, last idea, is to do it a little bit more, um, more advanced again. So, we have a start of the line. I, I kind of split it on different, uh, on, on, uh, with, with uh, I have a new, everything coming on new line just to make it a bit more readable. Uh, then, there is a group. Uh, there is a character class saying that there will be uh, zero or one, maybe, and there is there will be followed by a digit, and maybe another digit, or that thing there, or there definitely will be two, followed by any character between zero and four, and a digit, or two five and any kind of character between 0 and 5, because now we're actually building some logic into that thing. We're saying that if it starts at 0 or 1, then it might be there, it might not be there, but then the, there will be definitely at least one character and then maybe another one. But if it starts at 2, it can't be more than uh, anything between 0 and 4, so it can be 5, and the same one here. Then you can repeat that four times, or you could have used like quantifying uh, the, the curly braces kind of thing with times four, right? And that would actually match the real IP, and they wouldn't match the other ones. But it's actually quite a lot of work. I mean, it's quite a lot of thinking you, you actually have to do to, to be able to do that, because um, that's, that's not the first thing you actually think of, right? So, um, this is kind of hopefully going to be your new reality. I mean, like, I'm trying to, uh, the, the purpose of this talk was actually to, as I told you, not to teach you like regular expressions. You probably have used that, have seen that, have uh, 
uh, learned about that somewhere, and but is to show you the pitfalls and show you the things that you should be aware of when you uh, use them. And use them more often. The often you use them is the the the, the more fun it gets, really. Believe me, uh, <laughs> I've been. I, I actually tried to to force myself to use it as uh, more and more often lately, and actually, it's uh, it helps me a lot and it saves a lot of time instead of doing a lot of things manually or uh, doing some s working with text, working with log files, searching for some errors. Regular expressions, they really help you. I mean, it's not just, it's actually some kind of part of reality in that, um, in that picture, really. Um, are there any questions? Anything, uh, kind of comments, ideas, any other things that you should, uh, you kind of think that is important to think about when you work with regular expressions? Anyone? Yes. I think that one of the most important things about regular expressions is when to stop. Yes. Um, and if you could expand on your IP address example, it's a very good example of where uh, regular expressions might not be the total mm. answer. Exactly. Where you might want to use regular expressions to filter out obviously uh, invalid strings that cannot be IP address mm -hmm. and then farm out uh, the check for boundaries to a boundary check algorithm. Yes, that's that's exactly that's a very good point. Uh, it's uh, it's very important to know where to stop, and uh, it's also uh, well both IP address and the HTML parsing thing is also one of those things where you you don't want to do that with regular expressions. And the other thing is that uh, important thing is also to actually split them to make them as uh, you do it in several steps as well. You don't want to do put everything, all your logic into one thing and make like uh, this kind of monster like this, right? Because that's going to that's gonna be a lot of fun to read in a year or something when well, after you forgot how uh, you actually have built that together, put that thing together. So uh, definitely. Um, I got a question as well. Yes. Uh, do you know of any nice collections of good regular expressions? Oh, uh, this. Uh, well, I've seen quite a few of them on the internet, but uh, I'm not sure. I mean, it depends on good. I mean, it's like sometimes you you can, uh, for example, uh, email matching regex and stuff. There are like pages that try to kind of accumulate that, but I'm not sure if it is. Uh, well, I mean, you can you can search. You 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 definitely will find those on the internet. But I'm not sure if they are. Um, sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're not. And sometimes the, they are kind of implementing it in the way you wouldn't do that. So you kind of no, I'm not doing that way. I'm gonna write my own. And that, but yeah, there are there are quite a few of them. But it depends if you want just to trust them blindly and use them, or you want to use it as an inspiration or whatever. And uh, how would you go about analyzing um, one you found and wondering, is like, is this something that I should be using? I really like to to use this uh, this guy that this this web page that I was uh, using here in this presentation. I'm just trying to find it. Uh, the, the showing the visualizing the whole thing as a, uh, it's kind of really far back. Uh, visualizing it as a train. Uh, diagram thing, which it helps a lot. It really helps a lot both to write your own or debug the ones that doesn't work because for us humans, this is much more easy to understand than this. This is fine for computer, for, 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 for at least for me, I don't know, I, I kind of like reading it this way than actually uh, the real regular expression notation. So I would really advise you to try that uh, page, and there are pro there are quite a few of them also. But it's, it's really cool. I like it. Yes. I've noticed that uh, many spammers seem to use uh, a slight alteration of their address when they send spam again and again and again. Yes. So maybe if you can find how how their what their plan is, you can just use a regular expression and get rid of all the spam they will create in the future. But do you know if anybody has created spam or regular expressions against uh, known spammers like that? Uh, I know that uh, that that it's really big field and it's really hard because I, I actually a couple of days ago I talked to a guy that was uh, working with uh, analyzing spam and uh, 
making those filters and it's a lot of work because uh, that's that's exact. I mean, if you write it, th th that's the really tempting thing to write on a regular expression to do that, right? But then uh, that's exactly what they uh, kind of try to counteract wh wh with replacing uh, O's with zeros and uh, different using different weird characters in a word, so you won't really get a match, and that would actually pass as a okay text. So it's, it's kind of, it's also might be a little bit difficult to just use that, but you have another techniques, you have like some kind of machine learning techniques that you would use to actually filter spam a bit more uh, effectively. I mean, you can use a, a bit of regular expressions, but that would get really complicated. So you would probably might want to use some other kind of uh, machine learning techniques and saying that, okay, if those words followed by this and this and they are coming in this kind of uh, order and stuff. That's basically what they're using in the, the main, like the big companies uh, like Google and Microsoft and all of those guys the selling the filters. I mean, this is a spam filter fi uh, services is uh, it's a good business. And that's, they, they use a bit more than regular expressions I, as far as I know. I just, I just want to comment on that. And yeah. You're absolutely right. Um, what you're talking about is my job. And um, you can essentially make a regular expression that matches one kind of case. Yeah. But you'll need at least uh, a couple of thousand of those cases. Exactly. Uh, and that's just for matching the, some, of, some of the patterns. But they have other things that are patterns that are not related to addresses or IP addresses and stuff like that. They have a uh, way they phrase things which you cannot do uh, at least in any sane way yes. with regular expressions. You have to have some grammars or that, and you have to use a bunch of techniques to catch them. Yes. That's, uh, that's, but uh, yeah. sure, regex is a part of our arsenal in mm. catching some things, but uh, that's just a really small part. I think the more, uh, the, the, the thing that's being used more, I mean, you know a bit more about that than me, I guess, but I'm pretty sure, actually. But um, the, the probably what you want to do use is actually some kind of text ana analysis. That would be more uh, effective than actually writing a super, super regular expression that would match everything, all those offers of different medications and stuff or whatever you normally get in email. Well, usually it's that or uh, dead relatives with lots of money. So it seems like there's no further questions, and, and I want to thank Rustam for his second presentation today, thank and you. enlightening us a bit about regular expressions. Thank you.